It's time to get ready for Christmas. Come on in. I've got 10 tips to help you get prepared for gift giving this holiday season. Tip number one is to create a theme. So let's say you decide you're going to go with a woodland theme for your holiday decor this year. Then you want to purchase gift wrap, gift labels, gift tags, all the things that you would use to package up those gifts to get them out of the house to complement that particular theme. I've been using a woodland theme for the past couple of years, so I've chosen this gift wrap. And I make sure that I have enough of it to last me for at least two seasons. And this is what it looks like. It's really pretty. It's got a lovely woodland theme. You've got your cardinals, just a hint of snow, that kind of thing. But the natural elements of it perfectly complement the decor that I've decided that I want for my home. So along with that gift wrap, I will also purchase bows, other little embellishments, things that I can use to wrap my gift to complement whatever's going on in that room. So under my tree, you'll see gifts such as this or packages such as this. Here's my signature gift wrap there. Right here, I turned the wrap inside out, and so you're seeing the back of it instead of the front, but it all works together. And then little pine cones and other elements that I put together. And also, of course, notice the label also complements the package. Tip number two is to set a budget. You can break the bank, and you don't want to do that. So set a budget and determine how much it is you want to spend on your gift wrap, embellishments, as part of the other decor that you bring into your home for that particular season. Now keep in mind that you want to buy the best gift wrap that you can. Picking up some of that gift wrap at Dollar Tree is very thin and so it tends to break or tear very easily. So you want to pick something that's a medium weight, something such as this, so that when you wrap it, you're able to get the corners and different things like that wrapped without any problem. So again, cheap wrapping paper tears easily and the corners may poke through. So you want to purchase the best gift wrap that you can. So then tip number three is to shop the sales. Hobby Lobby and Michaels, Joann's, and some of the big box stores will have sale on their holiday gift wrap every week or so during the holiday season and make sure you take advantage of those sales. For example, I made a trip to Hobby Lobby just yesterday and this gift wrap, which I totally love, is $9.99 for a roll. But when I get it at the 50% off sale, I can get it for $5. And so I'll try to get at least one at the beginning of the season. And then at the end of the season, when all of the holiday items are 60 and 75% off, I'll try to pick up another roll if I think that I may need one for the upcoming year. So ribbons to wrap your packages, tags to put on your packages, will all be 50 to 60% off. So I try to pick up the tags that I'm going to be using the next year at the end of the year clearance sale. So these are items that I picked up last year and I have them in a bag and I keep this bag in the container with my gift wrap, my ribbons, my bowls and that kind of thing. I did pick up this one this year. I thought it was really cute and it perfectly complements the wrapping paper that I plan on using. So I got some extra tags this year. Tip number four is to prepare your workspace. Set up a workstation so that you've got what you need to 
get your gifts wrapped in a timely fashion. Such as, make sure you've got your gift wrap out, it's close at hand. You're also going to need a good pair of scissors to cut the wrap and to cut any ribbon that you need to use. And make sure you test the scissors ahead of time because you don't want to get frustrated by trying to cut ribbon and then end up fraying it and that kind of thing. Also, have your ribbon close by and make sure you've got both a gift wrap tape and a double sided tape. Why do we need both? Well, first of all, the gift wrap tape is more transparent, so when you put it on the package, it just kind of just kind of disappears. So it's not real observable. But your double-sided tape allows you to create more of a flat layering when you're taping things down. If you're putting on ribbon or if you have to double fold some of your paper to use the double-sided place, just to use the double-sided tape just helps to get a little bit of the thickness or the bump out of it. So you really do want to have both. And you can try to pick these up when they have them on sale. Now, when I went out shopping just the other day and I picked up some other things, which I'll show you in just a minute, I thought these were on sale. They were not. They were just beside the gift wrap and the other things, but the tape was not on sale. Have your glue gun handy because if you're going to be using natural embellishments like pine cones or some faux foliage like these, you're going to need some glue to help get those taped down or glued down to the top of the box such as I did here. So make sure you've got your glue gun available with some extra glue sticks so you're not running around looking for things. And then, of course, if you like to use these kind of purchase bowls, you want to make sure you've got your bag of bowls close by, have your labels out, and then, of course, you just might need a ruler. Not sure when or why, but you want to have one close by so you don't have to go skirting around trying to find it at the last minute. Tip number five is to wrap as you go. You don't want to wait until Christmas Eve or the day before Christmas Eve to wrap your packages. It is so much more fun to wrap them as you bring them in. So let's say you've got little ones and you don't want them to see. Well, once they get put to bed, just take some time to start wrapping up a few things and either hiding them somewhere in the house or maybe you can go ahead and get them under the tree. I don't know what your family routine might be, but it is so much nicer to wrap as you go. That way you can take your time if there's any additional things that you need to wrap them with, you have time enough to go out and get them, and you're not stressed and fatigued. And that stress and fatigue takes some of the joy out of the giving. So if you wrap as you go, you'll feel so much better and so much happier and just feel delightful as you're getting your packages prepared. The other thing to think about is that flat, square and rectangular packages wrap up so much easier. So let's say this ball, for example, it's in a nice little box, so I can probably get this wrapped up without too much trouble. But let's say the ball was not in a box, then I either have to find a gift bag to put it in, or I would make my own gift bag. And I'll show you how you can do that in just a little bit. But things that are odd sized, Put them in a box. Now, this nice little journal here is already in a box, so I won't have any trouble wrapping it. But this rooster that I might want to give to maybe a sister or a friend who likes roosters, this is going to be awkward. So either I'm going to have to find a gift bag that's large enough to hold the rooster and I can package it all around with tissue paper, or I can create my own. Or you can also put it in a box and then it'll just be so much easier to wrap. This is probably a good time for me to let you know that this video is brought to you by Apron Diva, my online apron boutique. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. Visit us at www.aprondiva.com. And let me share with you that this video is actually part of the collaboration Mega Motivation hosted by Dawn at The Minimum Mom. And for the December Mega Motivation Challenge, she wanted us to share with you some tips to help you prepare for Christmas. So my tips are regarding gift wrapping. 
However, there are so many other creators who are participating like Jennifer Scott from The Daily Connoisseur, Karen from Best Made Her Mom, and so many others who will have some very informative video ideas for you to help you get your Christmas season started. I'll link the playlist in the description box, so be sure to go over and check them out. And if you're not familiar with Dawn at The Minimal Mom, you are missing out. I will link her channel below so that you can check her out. She is a wealth of knowledge regarding decluttering, minimalism, how to get your family buy-in, and so much more. So be sure and visit Dawn at The Minimal Mom. All right, next up is tip number six, but be sure to stay to the end because I do have a bonus tip for you. Tip number six is to repurpose boxes. This is a box that I've had around the house and I'm not sure what particular event caused it to come into the house, but I wanted to use it as a gift box for Christmas. So you can see here, I simply just repurposed it. I covered it with my signature gift wrap, and I also covered the lid. I embellished it as I love to do, and then I put a gift tag on it that complements my wrap, and I'm good to go. You can purchase gift boxes at Joann's and different places like that, but it could be a little pricey. For example, this gift box was $6. Now, I did buy it at the clearance sale, so I got it at 66% off, but if you're in a pinch, you may choose to purchase it at the price that it is. This smaller one was $5. So you can either purchase your own at that price. And then here's one in this little neutral color that I bought. It also was $6. But you can see where I can just add a little bit of ribbon and a little bit of embellishment. And it's like part of my typical decor. However, you can repurpose boxes that you already have around your home and save money. Tip number seven is to make your own gift bags with wrapping paper that you already have at home or make your own bows. You can make bows from your gift wrap or you can make bows from the ribbon that you've already purchased. And tip number eight is my favorite one and that is to make the presentation part of the gift. I really like to embellish the gift boxes so that when my family members or my friends receive a gift from me, they know that gift came from Denise. If it comes in a wrap that is like this and it's got these embellishments on it, they know who wrapped that gift up. And make that presentation personal, either personal to you and like I said, I'll do a lot of this kind of thing when I'm preparing gifts for my family or make it personal for them. Here's what I mean by make it personal for them. This is a cute little ornament of a cat. My granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter, has gotten a cat over the past year, and this little ornament reminds me of her cat, Ivy. So I'll attach this ornament to her gift this year. The soccer ball that you saw is for one of my grandsons. And I will put this ornament that has a soccer ball, a shoe, and then a score. I will attach that to his gift. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. These ornaments can be a little pricey. For example, this one is normally $5, but I did get it at the 50% off sale, so it was $2.50. This ornament is normally $4, so I got it at the 50% off sale, so it was only $2. But you can rack up quite a bit of money if you buy cute little personalized ornaments for each family member. And again, you want to be selective as to what you purchase and how much you purchase and getting it on sale, that kind of thing. So that's going to be part of the budget that you set on your spending for gift wrap and your Christmas decor. Now, something else that I picked up to help adorn my packages was this little wreath. Now, this wreath was $10. I got it 50% off, so it was five. But what I plan to do is just take apart 
the wreath and take some of the greenery off. So what I'll do is maybe I'll take this particular piece off and that piece off and I will use these pieces to embellish my package tops. Now these are other items that I picked up to use as package toppers. For example, this was $1.99 but it was on sale for a dollar and I can either use this whole piece as my package topper maybe add a little bowl or something like that this particular topper was 99 cents and so I could just clip this off and I could use these pine cones as part of my embellishments something similar to that and then I really liked finding these little berries now these berries were $2.99 so that means they were $1.50 each and I did buy two of them but I can just clip off just a couple of the little strands here and there so I've got enough berries here to do all of my packages and for some reason I was really loving these little white berries this year with this greenery so I picked up some of this and this was just $1.50 on sale so these are all things that I'm going to be using as embellishments on my packages this year. And like I said, I did shop the sale. And you can also go out in your backyard and clip some greenery off your pine trees, pick up some pine cones from your yard. But if you're going to be mailing those packages, you probably want to use something that's going to be faux instead of natural because I'm not sure how long you're going to have to have them in the package. If it's going to be a couple of weeks, that kind of thing, they'll get kind of dry. And so some of the pine needles may start to drop. So I will tend to use those that I picked up from my own yard for packages that I'm wrapping locally. And then of course, you can also buy a um, garland. Um, you can also buy a garland and sometimes they will have those real simple greenery ones on sale and then you can pick those apart. So, Tip number nine is to put gift cards in larger boxes to make them easier to find and to keep track of. So you could use a box, maybe something such as this, you can pick a box like this up at Dollar Tree for a dollar. Or again, you can repurpose a box you've already got. Put that gift card in a small box and then put that inside a larger box so that it's just easier to keep track of during the holiday season. Because you would hate to give someone a gift card and then they lose it before they even get home and get the opportunity to spend it. And tip number 10 is to make sure that whatever you use to embellish your packages or whatever gift you choose for your loved one is to make sure it is age appropriate. I don't put embellishments on gifts for my little little ones that are choking hazards or anything like that and when you purchase a gift you want to make sure that you check the age on the box so that it is something that's age appropriate. You don't want to give anything that is a choking hazard. For example, the Barbies. There are Barbies that are for ages three and up, and they would have different little attachments or pieces that comes along with those than with some of the other ones. So just make sure you read the box and it is age appropriate. Now here are your bonus tips. Bonus tip number one is to keep a list of the gifts that you purchase for family and friends. Keep it in your phone, keep it in your planner, just keep it somewhere accessible so that you know what you bought. And also you might need to put a, uh, make a notation as to where it is if you have them in a gift closet or somewhere like that. I can't tell you the number of times that I bought gifts early for Christmas, forgot where I put them, bought more things and then found those other items later. So keep a list not only of what it is that you purchased, but also make a little notation as to where you put it. And then the best bonus tip is to make your own bows. It is so easy to make your own bows. You can make them out of the wrapping paper that you're using, or you can make them out of ribbon that you've already purchased. For more Christmas inspiration, click here. Be sure to check out the link in the description box for the bow and bag tutorial. And don't forget to visit Apron Diva at www.aprondiva.com.